What the heck even is the difference between a PA and NP? <laughs> this is a hard one to answer. Um, I've got some really objective information to share with you that I think may help elucidate this for you, but you're gonna be asked this a lot, uh, and you may be asking this question yourself, and it is often hard to give a reply to that. It's hard. So this is the video for people who are in a season of indecision about whether or not they should become a nurse practitioner or a PA. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the differences, the nuances, and kind of my advice on what you should choose if you're in this part of your life. If we haven't met yet, my name is Bree. I'm an RNNP mentor, interview strategist, and content creator. Welcome to the channel. Okay, so here's, here's the reality. Once you're done with school and you're working uh, within a group, PAs and MPs practice exactly the same. Almost. Okay. In my experience, exactly the same. There are some places where they do practice a little differently, but, and we'll get to that. But for the most part, they're the same. In fact, everybody you work with, even people who know you and have known you for 10 years, sometimes they don't even know if you're an MP or a PA. So we are very similar in our role and in what we're paid. Where we differ is our training. That's the primary difference. And there are some roles that NPs are not as prevalent in that PAs are in and vice versa for NPs. So let's get to it. People will often tell you that the main difference in the training between PAs and NPs is that PA programs focus more heavily um, on the medical model and training to mimic the way physicians are trained. NPs are more nursing, <laughs> but what does that actually mean? What does that actually mean? In both PA and NP school, we are learning to become providers. So we are learning to think like physicians and act like physicians. Now we are not physicians, nor will we ever be. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying, but we still have to learn to act the way they do, to work the way they do, to treat people the way they do. So how is it different? How is it different? How is the approach to teaching people that way differently? Well, it kind of boils down to the mindset of what you're focusing on. For example, in learning about a disease state, PA's training is going to be more heavily focused on the anatomy and physiology of why this disease state is occurring. Nurses are also going to learn this, but there's going to be heavy emphasis on how the impact of this disease state affects the patient and their ability to heal. That's the more nursey component of it. It's the whole body approach that everyone talks about. Nursing is treating the whole patient. Um, it's taking a disease state of cirrhosis, for example, and looking at whether or not that's in stage or not in a patient's life and the pathophysiology of it and how a patient dies from it, how you need to treat it, and adding on to it, okay, how is this person who now has a terminal disease going to live at home? How are they gonna get their medications? How is this cirrhosis gonna impact their mental health? It's more of a, how does this human being live with this disease state? There's more focus on it. I'm not saying that in physician training or PA training, they don't, approach this or talk about it. It's just more heavily emphasized in nursing programs. So when people say things are nursy, that's kind of what they mean. It's a focus on the person and the human being and how it affects everything all together. First of all, entry. So to go to PA school, and I'm not a PA, so PAs correct me if I'm off base here, but it's my understanding that there has to be a component of healthcare training. You have to have spent a, a pretty large amount of hours. I want to say it's like 2,500 or 3,000 hours working in healthcare in some format. And many people who are very young or don't have a lot of experience working will get this through volunteer hours. But typically what you'll see is that people who are non-nurses working in healthcare go the, phys the PA route. Um, so you see a lot of EMTs, RTs, medical assistants who then go on to become PAs. A great way to do this, I think the ideal way to do this, is if you know that you want to be a PA or that you wanted to go into healthcare but you're debating between NP and PA, go work as a scribe. Go work as a medical scribe in an ER or an urgent care or a clinic somewhere. The amount of learning that you will get from a medical approach is off the charts. Off the charts. Those people often are doing it because they intend to go to PA school. Some of them NP school, but most of them PA school. NP programs used to be that you had to have experience at the bedside. I still think that this is the preferred way to do this. Um, 
I don't want to get too political on here. You guys have probably already watched a bunch of my other videos and you know how strongly I feel about this, but you do need experience at the bedside in order to advance upon that foundation to become a provider. That's the way it's set up and designed to be. It's designed to allow a person to work their way through school. Get your associates in nursing, be an LPN, then progress to RN, then progress to a BSN, then progress to MSN, and you can work your way through all of that, gaining experience as you go along. That's kind of the way it's designed to be versus a PA program where you are all in focused on school for, I think their schooling is like three years long. Correct me again if I'm wrong. I think it's mostly three years long. Um, and it's all focused on that. They spend a huge amount of hours at the bedside and in clinicals because they don't have that background to draw on. So this is why I don't think it's a great idea, these direct entry NP programs where you have no experience as a nurse and you go and get your RN, you may work for a summer maybe, and then go straight into your MSN or DNP program. So you're in school for, you know, all total for what, four or five years, something like that, maybe even more. Um, I don't love that, but that is an option in the nursing world. The approach to the education. So PAs are gonna be much more like physicians. They're gonna learn everything. They're gonna learn all the different specialties. They're gonna do a rotation through OB. They're gonna do heavy surgical rotations. They get a cadaver lab, more anatomy focus, which is why PAs are often preferred in the OR. You don't see as many nurse practitioners working in the OR because we don't get those specific rotations. Some people will get them if they ask for them, but typically you have to go on and get an RNFA or RN first assist license in order to assist with surgeries in the OR. So some people do do that, but you just see less of them. NP programs, conversely, NP programs are highly specific and focused to the role in the population you're gonna serve. For example, I'm acute care, so I only treat adults and I work in the acute care setting. So people who are actively sick or worsening in order to resuscitate, revive, and restore health. I'm not focusing or learning much on wellness, primary care, um, prevention of diseases. I'm focused on resolution of diseases. So when I get out into practice, I'm gonna take boards and I'm gonna be certified to work in this role with this population. I'm not gonna be certified to take care of somebody and treat and maintain their diabetes because I haven't learned that. PAs get a little bit of everything, so they have more options to go into different things from the get-go. So when it comes to job acquisition, PAs are gonna have more doors open to them because of their training, because they have a little bit more extensive and broad training, and because in my personal opinion, their reputation still remains more robust um, some places are gonna prefer PAs. On the other hand, NPs do not require physician oversight. Um, it's state by state whether or not you need a collaborating physician to practice. There are some states where NPs can practice autonomously. Again, another hot topic that I'm not sure I really wanna get into, but the possibility exists. So you're gonna have more doors open to you as an NP because of regulatory bylaws. And I also think that there are places that prefer NPs because some physicians and groups tend to hire NPs because they like people who have that bedside experience. So again, more fodder for the fire to support why having bedside experience is preferred. As a PA to maintain your license, you're gonna to have to recertify every 10 years, I believe you have to take a test. As an NP, you have to renew yours every five years. It does not involve a test. I think if you have been out of practice for some time though, you may have to retest. So to summarize all this up, here's the advice that I give to people. If you have been working as a nurse, go to NP school. If you have not been working as a nurse, but you have been doing something else in healthcare or nothing at all in healthcare, go the PA route. If you are fairly certain you wanna be going into surgery, go to PA school. Um, it just makes the most sense to me. Uh, the other thing that I think helps with job acquisition for NPs is your relationships. You've been working alongside physicians and they see how you practice as a nurse. And so when people know you and you have these um, you know, established relationships, it's easier to network to get a job. With PAs, you know, you're gonna be limited to who you know personally and where you've been exposed in your rotations. So it's a little bit less emphasis there. It just makes the most sense to me. 
follow the trajectory of where you've been and where you're headed. So that's my short speech on the difference between a PA and NP. In reality, we practice very similarly and these are my colleagues and friends and I respect the heck out of all my PA friends out there.